biasanya pakai pil yang berbeda. Baru-baru ini saya ke India. Saya bawa bel itu. Hari ketiga, mereka memberi bel seperti ini. Karena kata mereka, <laughs> Ibu bel Anda tidak punya kuasa di sini. Thank you. Shall I begin again? <laughs> And uh, it's true that this bell is louder. Bell seperti ini memang lebih keras. It is clearer. Lebih jelas. Uh, so you know that this morning, the first story I told you about in the Gospel of Mark is about Jesus' authority. Okay. Pagi ini saya bicara tentang kuasa Yesus di Markus pasal satu. Now just because you talk loud does not mean that you have authority. Kuasa tidak ditandai dengan suara yang keras. I know some people who always talk loud. Saya kenal ada orang-orang yang And biasa it bicara is, keras. It is an outside authority. Kuasa sekunder Ex kan. External. External ya. Yeah. But there is nothing inside that earns people respect. Bahasa seperti itu, eksternal seperti itu dia bisa mendapatkan respect orang. Now I'm very sure that when Jesus stood up to teach that day in the synagogue. Saya percaya pada hari itu ketika Yesus berdiri mengajar di sinagog. He did not say dia tidak berkata that the Lord is very much in control. Tuhan begitu pegang kendali. You can depend upon him for everything. Tidak dengan lu, you bapaknya. You know very well that he didn't talk like that. Yesus tidak bicara lu, you seperti itu. But when he stood up, every bone, every fiber, every nerve hmm. of his body just communicated authority. Hmm. Ya, setiap tulang, da, otot, sarafnya mengkomunikasikan pesannya juga. When you really feel the conviction of God's word inside of you. Jika Anda merasa yakin firman Allah hidup di dalam diri Anda. That is the beginning of authority. Itu awal dari kuasa. And so it's very natural for you to use your gestures in a, a proper way. Bahasa tubuh dan suara yang lain-lain akan nampak natural. Now when I thought about this morning yang saya bahas pagi ini, I must tell you this. Saya harus katakan ini. That I don't usually talk with so much passion. Tidak biasanya saya bicara dengan sesemangat tadi. And uh, I'm not excusing myself. Saya tidak sedang. But I did observe that every one of you listened very attentively. Tapi saya lihat kalian semua begitu perhatian. So that inspired me to go on. Buat saya semangat untuk terus ngomong seperti itu. So, what? She is amazed at you. You are amazed. <laughs> and and uh, um, and because you, uh, what are you amazed about? Huh? <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, I really mean this. I, I am trying as a teacher to demonstrate. Uh, interaction with the group. Okay, why were you amazed? Spontaneous? Spontaneous? Is that what? Enthusiast. No, <laughs> I think I will stop her because I get a little embarrassed. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to demonstrate that if someone in the group says something, I, as a leader, I'm, I want to interact with her. Uh, it is important for a teacher or a group leader not just to talk. Penting bagi seorang pemimpin tidak hanya bicara, 
but to interact. Juga berinteraksi dengan orang yang dipimpin. You watch Jesus in the gospel. Yang kalian lihat pada diri Yesus dalam kitab Injil. The first lesson that we're going to look at today pertama yang akan kita lihat hari is about ini, Jesus as a teacher. Tentang Yesus sebagai seorang guru. Now, sometimes a teacher, what we call teachers or professors. Dengan orang yang kita anggap atau panggil sebagai guru atau profesor. And I think this is very true in traditional cultures. Biasanya uh, which most of us come from. Which most of us come yeah, from. Biasanya dalam tradisi kita sosok guru atau profesor itu seperti The traditional teacher talks 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 talks. Ya, talks, talks. mereka hanya bicara, bicara dan bicara. But when you look at Jesus more closely, Tapi ketika melihat Yesus secara lebih dekat lagi, if you really watch it closely, you will see that he always encouraged dialogue, conversation between kita lihat, himself. Yesus selalu memancing dialog. Between himself and the uh, the uh, listeners dan pendengarnya especially with the disciples terutama dengan murid-muridnya so i challenge you saya menantang kalian follow jesus example ikutlah teladan yesus in learning how to dialogue with other people belajar bagaimana mengajak orang berdialog a bible teacher does not just give out facts pengajar alkitab tidak hanya memberi Fakta-fakta. A Bible teacher or a Bible group leader is very, very interested in how do the uh, how do the listeners receive the words. Sangat berminat atau menekankan respon pendengarnya. If you don't think about how do they respond, kalau kita tidak berlatih memperhatikan respon orang. What you will do is just to keep on talking. Maka kita hanya akan terus bicara dan bicara saja. Now you can give out facts. Memang kita bisa memberikan fakta-fakta pada mereka. But that does not necessarily mean that the audience is receiving it in the best way possible. Tapi kita tidak boleh berharap mereka hanya menjadi penerima pasif dari fakta-fakta yang kita berikan. Uh, in the guidebook that you have, di bahan ini, uh, if you had a chance to look at it, jika kita perhatikan, you will see that they're all taken from the Gospel of Mark. Semua diambil dari Kitab Markus. Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels. Kitab Injil yang terpendek dari empat Injil itu. It is only half the length of the longest Gospel. Panjangnya separuh dari Injil. Panjang ya, Lukas. Does anybody happen to know which of the four is the longest gospel? Yang terpanjang, Lukas. Luke. Okay, it is Luke. It is almost twice as long. Nah, kali lipat panjangnya dari Kitab Markus. Now, I, uh, if I remember, tomorrow I will bring you um, a booklet. Uh, on the Gospel of Luke. Besok saya akan saya bahkan buklet Kitab Lukas. Uh, a number of years ago, InterVarsity Press of the American IVCF. Beberapa tahun lalu, perkantas Amerika um, asked a group, asked a group of us. Penerbit perkantas Amerika meminta which kami, book, beberapa orang. Which book of the Bible do you want to write a guide for? Dan menawari kami kitab Injil mana yang kalian ingin tulis bahan PA-nya. And I clearly want to do something on Jesus. Dan saya dengan jelas menjawab saya ingin menulis sesuatu tentang Yesus. I would have chosen Mark. Saya memilih Mark. Uh, but somebody already took that. Tapi uh, seorang sudah mengambil kitab itu sebagai bahan PA. -nya. Meanwhile, Sementara I have become very interested in the Gospel of Luke. Padahal waktu itu saya sangat tertarik dengan kitab for many Lukas ini. For many reasons. Banyak alasan. Number one, he's Pertama, the only non-Jew. Lukas satu-satunya penulis yang non-Yahudi. Uh, that has written a book in the Bible. Penulis non-Yahudi yang menuliskan Alkitab. And especially from the four Gospels. Uh, 
uh, especially of the four, he's the only non-Jew. Secondly, I think Luke understood women. Kedua, karena Lukas begitu memahami wanita. If you look at his gospel, kita melihat kitab-kitab Injil, you will see that he talks more about women than all of the other three put together. Lukas mencat menulis lebih banyak tentang perempuan dibanding tiga Injil yang lain. He has more stories about women. Dia punya lebih banyak cerita tentang and their perempuan. interaction with Jesus. Dan interaksi perempuan-perempuan itu dengan Yesus. And they are very um, uh, under uh, shows Jesus with a tremendous understanding of women. Dan dia menulis banyak sekali pemahaman wanita-wanita ini tentang Yesus. And his understanding of women was radically different from the traditional view of the Jews. He also talks more about family life, about children. He talked more about the poor and how Jesus ministered ya, to the poor. banyak tentang orang miskin, bagaimana sikap Yesus terhadap orang miskin. Now it is because of Jesus heart for the poor that I was very glad to come back here to Indonesia. Karena hati Yesus yang kepada orang miskinlah yang membuat saya juga kembali ke Indonesia ini. Not to Perkantas, bukan kepada Perkantas kembalinya. But to work with the poor, Jadi the leaders of the poor. pemimpin-pemimpin yang bekerja di pelayanan orang miskin. I thought, what an opportunity. What an opportunity. Ini kesempatan yang luar biasa. 200 volunteer workers and pastors. 200 relawan dan hamba Tuhan. Who I think have only about 10% of the Bible knowledge that you have. Yang saya pikir hanya punya 10% saja dari pengetahuan Alkitab yang kalian punya. But look how God has used them in the slum communities. Tuhan memakai mereka semua di dalam komunitas-komunitas orang miskin. Now, Mama Hana, Mama Hana, uh, the CEO of the uh, Pondok Kasih. Yes, ketua Pondok Kasih. Wherever we went, she would like to introduce me. Mana pun kami pergi, Bu Hana selalu memberikan and she always told them how old I am. And whenever she told that, the people would just laugh. And they were not laughing at me. I think they were laughing in delight. And then they applauded. <laughs> and always, I'm very sure I was the oldest of anybody in that group. Well, <laughs> uh, the fourth church I preached at was called Garbage Dump Church. Now you know that is so far from the groups that you, you held. But you can imagine what a tremendous experience that was for me. So that when we began the training course, I understood where these leaders were coming from. It was very important for me to know that. Just when you write a Bible study guide, you must know where the people are coming from. Jadi ketika kalian nanti akan bikin bahan PA, pahami orang-orang You can learn that from Jesus. Menggunakan bahan Anda. When Jesus was here, ketika Yesus di sini, he talked and ministered to all kinds of people. Yesus melayani berbagai jenis orang. Highly educated like Nicodemus. Pendidikan tinggi seperti Nicodemus and not educated like the Samaritan woman. perempuan Samaria yang tidak berpendidikan. You see that in John 3 and in John 4. Yohanes 3, Yohanes 4 mencatat hal itu. He ministered to men and women. Yang melayani baik pria maupun wanita. 
which no rabbis did at that time. Rabbi waktu itu tidak melakukan hal itu. He ministered to Jews and to Gentiles. Ia melayani orang Yahudi maupun orang non Yahudi. He talked to people who were socially high and those who were rejects in society. Ia melayani orang-orang dengan kelas sosial yang tinggi maupun orang-orang yang ditolak oleh masyarakat. Now in your ministry, dalam pelayanan I, kalian, I know that. You are ministering to a very highly select group. Saya tahu kalian melayani orang-orang yang terpilih. But eventually, you will have to minister like Jesus. Tapi pada akhirnya kalian akan punya pelayanan seperti Yesus. Tidak, tidak to any and everybody that God sends to you. Kepada siapa saja yang Tuhan utus kepada kalian. Now I believe that Luke caught that. More clearly than either Matthew or Mark or John. Saya percaya Lukas melihat hal itu dengan lebih jelas dibanding ketiga penulis Injil yang lain. In many ways, I think that my personal opinion, Luke, to me, was the closest to Jesus' mentality and outlook and attitude. Dalam pandangan saya pribadi, saya melihat Lukas yang lebih mendekati apa yang menjadi yang dipikirkan oleh Yesus, concern Yesus. Tentang orang-orang ini. Well, that's why I like Luke. Itu sebabnya saya suka Luke, Injil Lukas. I think he caught the spirit of Jesus. Dia menangkap spirit Yesus ini. And more than anything else, Luke understood the humanity of Jesus. Lebih dari way, semua itu, Lukas memahami kemanusiaan Yesus. So he presents Jesus as the perfect man. Sehingga ia menampilkan Yesus sebagai manusia yang sempurna. He shows Jesus with the struggles of our humanity. Yesus juga bergumul dengan sifat-sifat manusiawinya. Of course, he believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Tentu, ia percaya Yesus adalah anak Allah. All four Gospels writers do. Keempat penulis Injil pasti meyakini itu. But I think Luke brings out his humanity much to me much more clearly. Tapi Lukas menunjukkan lebih sisi kemanusiaan Yesus itu lebih dari tiga Injil yang lain. Because he shows the struggles of Jesus. That I don't think that the other three do as clearly. Karena dia menunjukkan sisi kemanusiaan Yesus itu tidak sejelas dari tiga Injil yang lain. And there are reasons why there are four Gospels. Dan ada alasan mengapa ada empat Injil. Now to me, Mark shows Jesus training of the twelve much more clearly than the other. Bagi saya Markus lebih jelas di dalam menunjukkan Yesus itu mentraining dua belas. Orang muridnya. And it is much clearer to me in the Gospel of Mark, the first year, the second year, and the third year of Jesus' ministry. Mark, kita Markus juga menurut saya paling jelas menggambarkan pelayanan Yesus di tahun pertama, kedua, dan ketiga. And I help you to see that in chapter one, verse fourteen. Pasal satu ayat empat belas dalam Markus itu begins Jesus public ministry. Awal dari pelayanan publik Yesus. It ends. It ends with chapter three, verse six. Terakhir dalam pasal tiga ayat. Or maybe six to thirteen, twelve. The second year tahun kedua pelayanan Yesus begins mulai di pasal tiga, with chapter three, verse thirteen, ayat tiga belas, and it ends with chapter six, verse six a. Nggak pasal enam ayat enam a. By a we mean the first half of the verse. The third year. Tahun ketiga pelayanan Yesus begins with six B, enam B, and it ends with chapter sixteen, pasal enam belas, verse twenty, yang dua puluh. Now I want you to look at these three, the the first event. The first I'm using the word event to mean a specific story. A specific narrative. So, yang ingin kalian memperhatikan narasi pertama itu, peristiwa pertama di Injil Markus itu. What does each of these 
What do the three of the, the beginning event have in common? Apa persamaan tiga event di dalam tahun pertama, kedua, ketiga di awal-awal okay, awal tahun? Take a look. Take about five minutes. Lima menit perhatikan. What is significant about Mark choosing a certain event to introduce the second year and the third year? Apa yang menjadi penekanan Markus di dalam memperkenalkan pelayanan Yesus tahun pertama? In other words, what is Jesus doing in the first event, beginning the first year? What is Jesus doing at the beginning of the second year? What does he do in the third year? Jesus doing something. Jesus doing something. He's doing something. Of course he's doing something. <laughs> But what is he doing? What, oh, James, huh? Okay, James. What is he doing in the first event, James? Yeah? He 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 lives. But what is he doing from from verse 14 until verse 20? From verse 14 until verse 20. What is Jesus doing? Yeah, you're right <laughs> that in every case he's doing something. But what is significant? What is he doing? Come on, you got Andy, it. Who? He's calling, calling the first disciple. Okay? Because these four become part of the twelve. Karena empat murid pertama ini jadi bagian dari dua belas murid. So what Mark is telling us is that these four disciples, uh, they represent the twelve. Markus ini adalah menunjukkan bahwa empat ini mewakili dua belas murid yang. Okay, James. What is he doing at the beginning of the second year, from three thirteen until I forget what it is, what nineteen or twenty or something like that. What is he doing? Okay, in this he appoints the twelve apostles. By the beginning, of, uh, during this first year, he has collected many dis uh, disciples. Now, what's the difference between a disciple and an apostle? Okay, talk about it in your small group. What's the difference between a disciple and an uh, and an apostle? Okay, uh, I can tell that you're not very clear. Clear enough. What is a disciple? Anybody? What is a disciple? You can tell um, by the word itself. What is another word that is? Uh, we get out of this word learner it doesn't it does not well it that's not primarily but if you look at the word at least in english you see disciple what is another word discipline they're connected same word so that gives you an idea of what a disciple is okay. disciple artinya dari kata akar katanya disiplin itu Okay, now you said follower, uh, that is a sec uh, that's true, but the word itself, the word itself, what does it mean? Just the word, disciple. What is another word? I don't care whether it's English or Indonesian, what is it? Student. A student. A follower is right, because if you are truly following Jesus, you are learning from Jesus. Uh, so that's that, that's a very good one. Yeah, please. Oh, you just oh, taking the camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A disciple is a learner, a student. Yeah. Disciple seorang pembelajar. He's listening. Dia He, mendengarkan. He's being very careful to follow the teacher. And if you read, oh, okay. Dia mengikuti gurunya dengan penuh perhatian. And if you read from chapter 1 until chapter 3, uh, the end of the first year, 
you will see that in these three chapters akan lihat dalam tiga pasal ini that these disciples they don't they're not doing anything para murid ini tidak belum melakukan apa apa i say they don't do anything of course they were they were learning they were following they were observing jesus mereka hanya belajar saja dari yesus maksudnya itu belum But you don't see them doing anything else. They're learning, 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 Jadi, belum learning. Belum melakukan apa-apa selain belajar dan belajar itu. The beginning of the second year. Awal dari tahun kedua pelayanannya. By this time, Jesus has hundreds of disciples. Nah, waktu itu Yesus punya ratusan para murid. Uh, there are other part of the gospel where I can say that confidently. But from among the hundreds of disciples, he chooses murid itu Yesus memilih 12 rasul ini. Well, what is an apostle? Jadi apa kata? Okay, you talk about it among yourself. What is an apostle? You must learn this. This is a fundamental difference, and yet they overlap. No, I want you to talk about it among yourselves. <laughs> hey, you are staff workers. You are not beginning <laughs> beginners. <laughs> okay, what is an apostle? Okay. It is one who is sent. He is sent by a higher authority oleh kuasa yang lebih tinggi to represent that authority to other people. So a, there is a difference between a disciple and an ada apostle. Murid dan rasul. Here you're just beginning. Now, as staff workers, Bagi seorang staff, you began as a disciple. Kita mulai dengan menjadi seorang murid. When you are appointed as an apostle, you represent Perkantas. Jika kita dipilih menjadi staff, kita mewakili Perkantas. And Perkantas represents the kingdom of God. Perkantas mewakili kerajaan. That's higher authority. Kita dipilih mewakili otoritas yang lebih tinggi. So it is significant that this does not happen until they have learned how to follow Jesus. Jadi itu basically. penting sekali. Pengutusan tidak terjadi sebelum kita menjadi pembelajar. What happens at the beginning of the third year? Apa yang terjadi di awal tahun ketiga? Some of you did not get to that, so please look at it. Okay, uh, James, what did you say? Okay, he sends them uh, the twelve on. I'm writing it out because it's so important on their uh, first evangelistic mission. Jesus mengutus mereka pada misi penginjilan yang pertama. In other words, Jesus had a very clear, definite plan. Dengan kata lain, Yesus punya rencana yang sangat And you have to remember this as you train students. Kalian harus terapkan ini ketika melatih mahasiswa. You don't give them a job to do until they demonstrate that they are re they have learned the basics. Kalian tidak memberi tugas apapun pada mahasiswa sebelum mereka And as staff worker, you always belajar. are sensitive. You are always watching them. Which among the many students, which one of them show some gifts of leadership? Kita harus termati dan punya kepekaan di mak. Siapa saja di antara mahasiswa itu yang punya uh, jiwa-jiwa atau which kualitas are, yang bisa diutus? Which of them show that God can use them even more? Mahasiswa mana saja yang Tuhan tunjukkan pada kalian untuk mereka bisa di But you don't send them out to do something until they have learned and they have had deeper training. Kalian tidak mengutus mereka sebelum mereka belajar banyak dan mendalam. Now I'll tell you a little secret. Saya beritahu rahasia. It has become very popular in American churches for young people to go out on a short term mission. Gereja-gereja Amerika populer sekali ada orang muda, orang muda pergi ke 
melakukan misi my church does it every, my church does it all the time my church does it all sering melakukan hal itu last summer they sent a team to the philippines di mana selalu gereja saya mengutus Last month, they sent a team to Okinawa. Next year, they want to send a team to South America. What I, I tell you what my secret is. I'm not happy about that. Now, you see it from your end. You've seen them, short-term missions, haven't you? No? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Apostles, yeah. I think they're still disciples. They're young. They're inexperienced. Karena mereka masih muda, belum berpengalaman. They go out and they're very sincere. Mereka memang tulus, orang-orang muda ini. But they, they don't do the kind of a work that they should be doing. Tapi mereka melakukan hal-hal yang sebetulnya belum harus mereka lakukan. Not the way that I understand it from Jesus' example. Now that that's very confidential. I don't want you to say, oh, you know, there was this eight alum. She came to Indonesia <laughs> and she criticized the American. <laughs> Tidak mau kita memberi, mem, mem, memberitahu orang lain ibu Edalam mengkritiki kebijakan gereja-gereja itu. I believe we have to go back to Jesus again. Menurut saya kita harus kembali pada teladan Yesus. And to learn from him how to prepare true missions. Belajar dari Yesus bagaimana mempersiapkan. Para utusan yang sejati, misionaris sejati. Tidak serta-merta mengutus siapapun yang mau. To me, this pattern is so clear in the Gospel of Mark. Tapi harus memuridkan mereka seperti yang jelas nampak pada Injil-Injil itu. Book of Acts is about. Itu isi kitab kisah para rasul. Not until Jesus had trained them is the church is born into the world. Gereja tidak lahir sebelum Yesus melatih para rasul ini. Selesai melatih. Now this is the way of telling you that your job as staff work is very serious. Itu cara saya memberitahu kalian bahwa tugas kalian itu begitu penting. You must follow what Jesus. Kalian harus mengikuti telah dan. You make sure. Pastikan. That your students. Para mahasiswa anda. Really know the basics. Betul betul mengetahui halal dasar. They know things like Colossians 3:16. Tahu. Kalau setiga enam belas ini, you begin to give them responsibilities. Kita mulai beri mereka tanggung jawab. You give them something simple at first. Mulai dari hal-hal sederhana. And when they do well, jika mereka bisa melakukan hal sederhana itu, then you give them more responsibilities. Kita beri tanggung jawab yang lebih besar lagi. You watch them. Dan kalian amati mereka. You know what I see Jesus doing? Yang dilakukan Yesus. That he taught. Yang mengajar. And he fed. Thousands of people. Ia memberi makan ribuan orang. He discipled. Ia memuridkan hundreds of people. Ratusan orang. But he chose only twelve. Ia memilih hanya dua belas orang. In a very special way to take over the work when he died and was resurrected. Untuk mengambil alih tugas di dalam dunia ini. And even amongst the twelve, Jesus. Dan di antara dua belas orang ini. Jesus fokus on three. Ada tiga murid, tiga rasul. Peter, James, and John. Petrus, Yakobus, dan Yohanes. And the Gospel of Mark shows that very clearly. Injil Markus menunjukkan hal itu dengan jelas. Every once in a while, he would choose only Peter, James, and John to observe and to experience something that the others did not have. Untuk mengalami hal-hal atau mengajarkan hal-hal yang murid-murid yang lain, rasul yang lain tidak mengalaminya. And then he concentrates on one. And there are three in Jesus. Who is that one? Focus pada satu orang ini. Siapa? Yeah, Simon Peter. Now, when you see this, I think now you can say, Oh yeah, of course. But what we need to do as Bible students is not just see one event. There really, throughout the Bible, is only one story. Well, I'm trying to help you to see the big picture of what it means for staff workers to follow Jesus in the student ministry. Saya sedang memberikan gambaran besar buat kalian apa artinya menjadi seorang staff di dalam mengikut teladan Yesus ini. I think we need to focus to concentrate on this part more. Saya pikir kita harus fokus pada 
Alha. You have to be sensitive. Kalian harus peka. You have 20, 30, 40 students. Tanya kalian punya 30-an mahasiswa. But which among them? Siapa di antara mereka? Are like the apostles. Yang seperti 12 rasul. You spend rasul. more time with them. Yang kepada mereka kalian spend waktu lebih banyak. You give special lessons to them. Kalian ajarkan hal-hal khusus pada mereka. Okay, now let's take a look at what happened at the end of the first year, what happened at the end of the second year, what happened at the end of the third year. Bagian terakhir dari tiap tahun okay. pelayanan Yesus itu. Di akhir six, tahun pertama, six minutes. Enam menit. About two minutes for each. Masing-masing dua menit. Of the first, the uh, second year and the third year, Jesus is doing something significant with his disciples. That is what they all have in common. Jesus is deliberately training the twelve. Di awal-awal pel tahun pelayanan, Yesus sengaja melakukan sesuatu khusus untuk orang-orang yang dipilih dan diutusnya. Did anybody observe that? What is what is the same thing that's happening? Apa Always look for similarities. Apa kesamaan pengalaman akhir tahun Yesus ini, akhir tahun pelayanan? Nobody got it? Yes? I'm sorry? The disciples go and preach the gospel. But that doesn't, no, they, 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 they didn't do it here. They didn't do it here. What is happening in this story? Um, Oh, I'm sorry, that, that, that was not a very good one. Um, one to six. What is happening in this event? Look especially at verse six. The end of the first year. Who is rejecting Jesus? Very good. He's rejected. But who is he rejected by? Okay, rejection by Pharisees and who else? Okay, who are the Herodians, Malia? Okay, they were Herod's followers. And you know what's interesting? The Pharisees were very politically anti-Roman. Orang Farisi secara politik sangat menentang Roma. They hated Rome. Mereka membenci bangsa Roma. They were always rebelling against Rome. Mereka memberontak kepada Roma. The Herodians were pro-Romans. Sementara orang-orang Herodian ini pro-Roma. That means that these two parties. Itu artinya dua kelompok ini. Political enemies. Secara politis adalah musuh satu sama But lain. When it came to Jesus, Tapi berurusan dengan Yesus, it shows how much they were afraid of Jesus. Mereka punya persamaan yaitu takut pada Yesus. They forgot about their political differences. Dia melupakan permusuhan di antara mereka. And they allied, they partnered. Mereka bersekutu in order to get rid of Jesus. Untuk mengusir Yesus. So already at the end of the first year, it's very clear these are very influential people. Jadi jelas di akhir tahun pertama ini, both religiously and politically, ya, baik orang-orang religius maupun orang-orang politik, we've got to kill him, ingin membunuh Yesus, we've got to get rid of him, ingin me melenyapkan Yesus. He's making it hard for us to in, for our position. Membuat posisi Yesus sulit. Now the, at the end of the second year, nah, di akhir tahun kedua, what nah, happens? Apa di situ persamaan? Ya yeah, James. Apostles? Is it the apostles who don't? Re who? There is rejection also, but who is rejecting Jesus? Yeah. What? Okay, he's rejected by uh, his uh, extended family. 
extended family. His hometown, they reject him. What about the end of the third year? I have chapters 14 and 16, but you know that story. Who rejects him? It's by the nation. Because the priests are the ones who are down there in Jerusalem, and they're the ones that can talk with the Romans. And so it's not by the nation, or only the nation, and by Rome, it's also by Rome. Okay. Now what have I shown you here? Now we did it quite fast. I'm trying to show you that in the Gospel of Mark. Saya menunjukkan pada anda bahwa di dalam Kitab Mazmur eh, Mark Markus, is, Injil Markus. Mark helps us to see the big picture. Markus memberi gambar besar. He has come to establish the kingdom of God Yesus on earth. datang untuk menegakkan kerajaan Allah di atas bumi ini. We can see that just before in verse 13. Jelas nampak di. It very clearly said. Jesus came on the public scene. Jesus tampil di Galilea itu. The king, uh, the time has come. Waktunya sudah. The kingdom kenap. of God is here. Kerajaan Allah sudah dekat. Repent and believe. Bertobatlah dan percayalah. That is Jesus' main message. Itu pesan in utama Yesus. He knows, because he knew the Old Testament. Ia tahu. He knows Ia he's tahu. eventually going to die. Ia pada akhirnya harus mati. So he prepares for that. Jadi ia mempersiapkan dirinya untuk He prepares itu. by ia appointing 12 apostles. Memilih 12 rasul itu. And I, I think by now you can see in this big picture what has happened. Saya pikir sekarang kalian tahu secara gambar besar apa yang terjadi. Whenever we study the Bible, Ampun kita belajar Alkitab. Always try to see kita harus selalu mencoba melihat what this particular event peristiwa-peristiwa tertentu apa how does this particular event contribute to the big story bagaimana kontribusi tiap peristiwa itu untuk untuk mendukung Now, gambar yang this, lebih besar we've itu. done this gospel of mark in a very quick way but it is an example of seeing the individual events that make up the one big story. Itu latihan kita untuk melihat satu kitab Markus ini, melihat poin-poin kisahnya dan mencocokkannya dengan gambar besar. And I can appeal to you as staff workers. Saya bisa mendorong anda sebagai staff. I, I, I couldn't say this to uh, the cemetery church or under the bridge church. Hal yang tidak bisa saya katakan pada gereja kuburan atau gereja yang lain tadi. Because you are the present day apostles. Karena kalianlah rasul-rasul hari ini. You have passed the first year. Kalian sudah melewati tahun pertama. Some of you have just begun your second year. Berapa dari kalian memasuki? And some of you are in the third year. Berapa di tahun ketiga? And you will see that from from this time on, from chapter six on to the end of Mark, that Jesus is spending more and more time with the twelve. Kalian lihat di akhir akhir tahun Yesus more and more menghabiskan you, lebih banyak waktu untuk more and more para rasul. More and more you will see that. Mark will say, after he left the crowd, they went into the house, and the disciples asked him, "What do you mean by that?" Berulang kali Yesus ketika ditulis mengundurkan dari orang dari orang banyak, ia menghabiskan waktu dengan para murid. Or something like this, as they were walking along the road. Atau ketika Yesus berjalan bersama para muridnya. Jesus asked them, "What were you arguing about?" Yesus bertanya, "Apa yang kalian ributkan?" You know, Jesus knows when we're arguing about amongst ourselves. Jesus juga tahu apa yang sedang kalian pertengkarkan. See, and that's an example of how many questions did Coco, how many questions did Jesus ask in the Gospel of Luke? Coco tadi nyebut. This morning. 80. 80. No, 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 no. That's what he said. Okay, 100. But, but then what did I tell you? That in the Gospel of 114 questions. I don't think you're impressed with that. I'm impressed. <laughs> impressed? 
Um, you, you don't know the word impress? I know. Oh, okay. Okay. I am trying to impress on uh, what I started to say this morning. Jesus taught people a lot by question. Jesus mengajar orang dengan banyak bertanya. And unless you understand this, you're not going to be able to write good Bible Kita tidak memahami guides. hal ini, kita kurang bisa menjadi pemimpin. We are not, when we write Bible, Bible study guides, we're not just giving facts that we like. Karena dalam membuat bahan PR, kita tidak hanya memberikan fakta yang We're kita trying suka. to help people to read the text thoughtfully. Bahan PR kita harus memancing orang so untuk mau belajar Alkitab. The main thing you have to do is to understand the big story. Jadi hal utama yang kita ketahui harus adalah mengetahui gambar besarnya. Get the main point. Mengerti poin-poin utamanya. You sit down and you prepare the outline. Kalian duduk lalu mempersiapkan outline bahan Now, PR. We're going to take a break in a few minutes. Kita akan break berapa menit lagi? Is it okay to have a break? <laughs> okay. Well, well, I, I think I like to have a break once in a while. Or you want to have a break at 1:30, uh, 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 2:30? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'll give you more work to do. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is for the rest of the afternoon I'm going to have you go through this book yes. very quickly and then to look at the details how do we prepare a bible study guide okay, sampai sore nanti kita akan perhatikan bagaimana kita mempersiapkan bahan PR now i could have begun by saying let's start with it at o'clock this morning let's start with lesson one. Okay. but you have to have the background You have to know the overall aim, and it's not that simple. Okay. Tidak akan menjelaskan satu persatu, menuntun satu persatu nanti. I kita harus berusaha menangkap poin utama dari semua training ini. I know that you know that. Saya tahu kalian tahu hal ini. That's why you have this training extended for three days. Sebabnya training ini dirancang tiga hari. Uh, we meet tomorrow. Um, now. This morning, when I uh, sometimes I would ask you, do you have any questions? Pagi ini ketika saya bertanya, kalian ada pertanyaan? And nobody had questions. Tidak ada yang bertanya. So, I don't think you are used to my style. Saya tidak berpikir kalian belum terbiasa kayak saya. But you have become more used to it. Jadi kalian mulai, sekarang mulai terbiasa dengan cara saya. I'm going to ask you a question, another kind of a question. Ya, sekarang saya mau tanyakan satu pertanyaan lagi. You know what we've done? We've gone to the whole Gospel of Luke, uh, Mark. Ya, apa yang kita lakukan tadi kita sudah secara, uh, secara menyeluruh melihat kitab Markus. So that we could see the big story. Kita sudah melihat gambar besar, kisah Then when you, when you look at individual parts of ya, kita the big story, bagian-bagian dari big story itu, kisah besar know, itu, oh, this is where it fits. Kita bisa melihat, oh ya ini pas. You do not find Jesus, uh, you do not find the disciples in the first year doing anything except listening, observing. Kita melihat para murid itu tidak melakukan apa-apa selain belajar dan belajar di tahun pertama. Now of course that's very important. Jadi itu berita yang penting. But Jesus is not giving them an assignment, a practical assignment. Jesus tidak memberikan tugas. He's not giving them more intensive training the way that he does at the end of the second year and the third year. He is training them very intensively. Jesus tidak mengajar mereka secara khusus seperti yang dia lakukan di tahun kedua dan ketiga. You can see that in the language of Mark. Kita bisa lihat itu dalam bahasa bahasa Markus. So we must understand progression step by step. Harus melihat progres itu. You've got to. You're staff workers. You're thinking of Prokantas as a whole. Prokantas kita harus lakukan yang sama. And where does all of this fit into the kingdom of God? Adalah hal yang kita lakukan yang sesuai dengan cara-cara kerajaan Allah. But we're not used to looking at the big picture. Kita tidak terbiasa melihat gambar besar terlebih dahulu. Okay. Uh, now um, I want to ask you this question. Ini pertanyaan saya sekarang. You, if you don't have questions, you 
However, I think must have made some observations. I want your impression of this one hour that we have looked at the big picture of the Gospel of Mark. Kalian tuliskan atau apa ya impresi kesan kalian terhadap kitab Markus. What are you, what are you thinking? What are you feeling at this point? Apa yang kamu pikirkan apa yang kalian rasakan? No, I want you to share that. And as I have tried to be open. I talk about my struggles. Learn how to do the same thing. Don't be afraid to say I have questions. I don't like that teacher. Ayo lah, she can go back to Hawaii. If you feel that way, say it. Oh, they know that. <laughs> Any, what is going on in your mind? What about your feeling? Oh, yes. Okay, please. Uh, Didi. Didi, What difficulties did you at what point? First year, second year, or third year? Murid atau kasut? Kasut yang appointing the position. When he appointed, um, that's a good question uh, because we have to choose student leader. Let's turn to. Um, Pertanyaan bagus karena kita pun harus memilih pemimpin pemimpin mahasiswa. Where's my Bible? Oh, okay. Uh, um, okay, let's turn to Mark. Because we, we are looking at the Gospel of Mark. In chapter 3, Markus pasal 3, ayat 13, the beginning of the second year. Awal tahun kedua, pelayanan Yesus. Now it says, Jesus went on, up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted. And they came to him. Okay. Now, verse 4, uh, uh, but if you look, keep your finger there, turn to the Gospel of Luke. In chapter um, 6. Verse 12. Okay, would you read that please? Verse 12. Uh, yeah, uh, 12 and 13. 12 and 13. Okay. Lalu pergilah mereka memberitakan bahwa orang harus bertobat. Dan mereka mengusir banyak setan dan mengoles banyak orang sakit dengan minyak dan menyembuhkan mereka. Did you read 13 also? Yeah. Nah, ayat 12, 13. Lukas. He was reading Mark. Somebody else read it. Please, somebody else read it quickly. Okay, now look back to verse uh, in the Gospel of Mark and compare how, what's the difference between Mark and Luke when they describe the same event. They take about three minutes, two or three minutes, I'll follow you. What's the difference? Okay, that's a good start. What else is very different? So, yes, please. What, what did he Praying say? all night. He, that Luke says, he prayed all night. Mark doesn't say that. No, that's okay. I'm not criticizing Mark. <laughs> no. But there's something very significant. I told you a little while ago 
that Luke's gospel emphasizes the humanity of Jesus. And it is in the it is in the gospel of Luke that you where you will find throughout his gospel he talks more about Jesus praying than either Matthew or Mark or John. It shows how very dependent that Jesus was on his father. Menunjukkan Yesus begitu bergantung untuk mengandalkan bapaknya. Before every crisis in the gospel of Luke, you will find Jesus praying. Kita akan membaca di sana Yesus berdoa. All night. Berdoa sepanjang malam. Okay, now in answer to uh, Didi's question, I want you to discuss why did he pray all night? What did he have to pray about in choosing the twelve from amongst hundreds of disciples? Untuk menjawab pertanyaan Mas Didi tadi kita harus berpikir mengapa Yesus perlu berdoa semalaman untuk memilih dua belas di antara ratusan murid itu. What does he have to consider very practically? Apa yang harus dipertimbangkan secara praktis untuk memilih dua belas? Another way of asking the question is, what is his criterion for choosing the twelve? Apa kriteria untuk memilih dua belas rasul ini? And why? Why this criterion? Mengapa perlu kriteria seperti itu? Now this is so important that I want you to discuss it more in depth. Okay, take about five, six. You really need half hour, but I'm going to give you. Okay, lima minit untuk berpikir. About five, six. I'll watch you. If you are keeping on to discuss, I want to give you all the time you need. What is Jesus doing all night when he's praying to the Father? Please show me which one. Of, what does he have to do? How is he going to choose them? Okay? You do it. Now, turn around in a group or three. Some of you are just sitting in a way where you're not looking at one another. <laughs> turn around in groups of three so you're looking at one another. Yeah. Okay, let's go around. Uh, okay, you want to begin uh, Cucuk, huh? Okay, Mas Cucuk akan okay. memulai. <laughs> okay, the result of the discussion, of the group discussion. What? The result of the group discussion. Well, give me one thing. What is one uh, factor that Jesus has to consider in choosing the twelve? Okay, one or two, yeah? Terserah kalau itu. Okay. Speak long enough, and I will, I will summarize this. You will talk long. You want to summarize everything? No, no. He let me to summarize. Oh, he wants you to summarize. Yes. He will speak long. No. I want each one of your group to give me one thing. Oh, langsung eh, itu the point. He what? They must must convince that Jesus is the Messiah. They must be convinced that he is the Messiah. You can tell I am hesitating. No, I think it's a good consideration. But if you follow the Gospel of Mark. Jika kalian mengikuti kitab Markus ini, it is not until the third year, baru di tahun ketiga, when they are up there in Caesarea Philippi, jika di Kaisera Filipi itu, Jesus deliberately takes them away from the crowds, mengajak, membawa mereka ke tempat 
istrinya. As in chapter 8 of Mark. Pasal 8 dari kitab Markus. And he asked them, who do people say that I am? Baru di situ murid-murid yakin Yesus Mesias. So he's having a Bible discussion. He knows what people are saying. Okay. Dia tahu. He wants dikatakan. them to answer. Dia minta mereka sendiri menjawab. And that is why Chucho, you say, well, you know, Ada, you give the uh, you give the summary. Okay. Sebabnya kurang tepat kalau di yang. And I said no. <laughs> I want you to tell me. That's what you must do in your Bible study group. You can give them the answer, but you want them to participate. You want them to articulate what they have discovered. Okay. Jadi sebetulnya pas juga mereka tidak hanya menjawab tapi juga menjelaskan argumennya tadi. Yang... It, yeah. It's far more powerful in terms of learning or group learning. Powerful kalau ini terjadi orang menjawab bicara dan menjelaskan argumen. The more people articulate, the more powerful is that lesson for them. Makin banyak peserta PA itu bicara itu makin banyak juga pelajaran yang mereka dapat. If I stood here for three days, eight o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon, and I tell you everything I know about how to write, prepare a Bible study guide. hari ini saya datang dari pagi sampai sore hanya beritakan apa yang saya tahu tentang PA. It is the least effective. Makin tidak efektif buat kalian. Is at the bottom here when if I lecture. Hanya saya saja yang bicara terus menerus. But the more that the group participates, the more they learn. Makin banyak partisipasi kalian, makin banyak pula yang kalian pelajari. This is at the bottom of how do I prepare a Bible study guide. Itu hal dasar di dalam kita membuat bahan PA nanti. And the heart of it is that what kind of questions can I ask? That will bring out maximum participation. Jadi intinya adalah pertanyaan seperti apa yang bisa memancing partisipasi maksimal dari pengguna bahan PA atau peserta PA kita. This is the heart of writing a good Bible study guide. Itu inti dari menulis membuat bahan PA yang baik. It is not easy. Dan itu tidak mudah dilakukan. But it is crucial. Itu penting. And I, my goal, I would not have come here if I did not feel you are capable of learning how to ask good questions. Saya tidak akan ke sini kalau saya uh, tidak yakin kalian bisa mengajukan pertanyaan itu. If you only look at Jesus and you try to analyze, kita kita bisa lihat Yesus dan menganalisanya. What is his question? Apa pertanyaan dia? Why did he ask this Mengapa question? Yesus menanyakan pertanyaan itu? What did he know about his Apa yang listeners? Yesus ketahui tentang pendengarnya? What is his ultimate aim in asking Apa tujuan utama question? Yesus menanyakan, mengajukan pertanyaan itu? You don't have to go to you have, by the way you have a very good library there. Kita punya perpustakaan yang baik. You can go to that library and learn some about some of these things by reading all of those books. Kita bisa melihat tambahan di situ. Uh, but if you only look at Jesus himself, you you just reflect on this very, like the series of questions that I gave you. You will learn more about how to ask good questions the way that Jesus did. Dibanding dengan membaca teori-teori memimpin PA di perpustakaan, dengan hanya melihat teladan Yesus di situ, yang Jesus, saya ajarkan ini. Jesus knew how to provoke people's thinking. Lebih strategis ini karena Yesus memancing Orang untuk berpikir. Jesus was never asking just give me give me back facts. Yesus tidak hanya meminta. He always asked questions that were based on what are the implications of the facts. Yesus tidak hanya meminta jawaban yang bersifat data tapi implikasinya. Implikasi dari okay, data-data itu terhadap mereka. Now, in answering Chuchuk's, uh, my response to Chuchuk's question or, or, or comment, saya terhadap komentar Chuchuk, is that at this point, the beginning of the second year 
They have had only one year of observing Jesus. Not a single one of them did, did believe that Jesus was the Son of God. I want to make that very clear. That at this point, none of them believed that he... It was too staggering, too big a question for them to handle at that point. I want to be sure that the simplest ones really understand the Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. However, if you heard Chu Chuk's comment, he said, the Messiah. He did, uh, did I hear correctly? You did not say the Son of God. You said the Messiah. Uh -huh. Is that right, Chu Chuk? Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's very important. Penting. To distinguish between what the disciples at that point what they thought, who the Messiah was, and then the Son of God. Penting untuk membedakan apa konsep para murid waktu itu tentang Mesias atau anak Allah. In the very, very first story, as we shall see later on this afternoon, in Jesus enters the synagogue in Capernaum, he begins to teach, and the people are amazed. And the and then what happens after that? There's a man in the congregation. I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. And what did Jesus, how did Jesus respond? I want you to take a look at that. Let's turn to that. chapter two of, uh, chapter one of Mark. It's the very, very first uh, opening ministry and it's very significant for that reason. Why does Mark choose this story to begin the ministry of Jesus. Kita lihat kisah awal yang diceritakan Markus di awal pelayanan Yesus pasal 1 ayat 2. Uh, look, yeah, okay, uh, read 23 to 24, please. Okay, ayat 23 sampai 24, Markus pasal 1. Pada waktu itu di dalam rumah ibadat itu ada seorang yang kerasukan roh jahat. Orang itu berteriak, "Apa urusanmu dengan kami, Hai Yesus orang Nazaret? Engkau datang hendak membinasakan kami?" Aku tahu siapa engkau yang kudus dari Allah. Now I, I don't I'm not going to take time now to explain every sentence that the, the demon said in the man. Why he said what he did. Saat ini saya tidak akan menjelaskan semua kalimat yang diucapkan iblis ini. But ini. he alone of everybody in the synagogue that day. He is the only one who knows Jesus identity. Pasti hanya dia si setan ini yang tahu identitas Yesus di antara he, banyak orang yang ada di sinagog itu. He's very accurate. Dan dia and sangat he, tepat pendapatnya. He not only knows who Jesus is. Setan tidak hanya tahu siapa Yesus. He itu. knows why Jesus came. Dia tahu untuk apa Yesus datang. Have you come to destroy us? Apakah kamu yeah. datang untuk menghancurkan? The answer is yes. Jawabannya yes. Now what does Jesus say? Apa yang dikatakan Yesus? In verse 25. 25. Tetapi Yesus menghardiknya katanya, diam, keluarlah daripadanya. Nah, he did it very well. Sometimes when I ask people to read this, this is how they do it, at least in Hawaii. And Jesus said, be quiet. <laughs> uh, you know very well that Jesus didn't say, oh, please be quiet. <laughs> you know what this, you know what Jesus was really saying? Now, I don't know what it is in Indonesian, but in English, <laughs> In, in America at least, Jesus really said, shut up! Now, why did you laugh? You didn't expect that. You think that every time that Jesus spoke, he was very sweet, he was very mild. Uh, I happened to bring a book along with me that a friend of, a pastor friend gave me. Jesus, mean and wild. It shows the Jesus as this kind of a person. In, in fact, he chooses the Gospel of Mark. He goes right to the Gospel of Mark and shows us how very seemingly to us. He was mean. Jesus was, was hard. And we, yet, we don't think of him. We think of him as sweet, compassionate, gentle. Of course he was. But this other side of him, and I'm not, oops, I'm not surprised that Mark begins with this story, the very first story, 
in his ministry. That's the very first story. He is showing Jesus authority. Jesus didn't say, be quiet. He said, shut up. Now, in English, at least in American English, it's not a nice word. I would never, never, never say that to anybody. I wouldn't say it to my family. I wouldn't say it to my friends. I wouldn't say it to anybody, because it's such a, a, a terrible thing to say to anybody. But I may say, it. oh, I shouldn't say I, uh, I, I, have, uh, I have used it. I remember one time when, uh, when, uh, when I began student work, I was also involved in, in um, high school and middle school work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, please, please tra translate that. Itu dia mesti jelaskan. Jangan pikirkan Yesus itu lemah, lembut terus ya. Saat saatnya Yesus tegas dan keras bicaranya. Ini yang menceritakan pengalamannya di no, layanan mahasiswa. We used to take the the student leaders to a, a leadership camp every year. Camp kepemimpinan. One day we took them to um, uh, a, a big house on the other side of the island. Satu hari kita retreat di uh, rumah besar di satu pulau yang lain. And they're all supposed to go to sleep by 11 o'clock. Harusnya mereka untuk jadwal tidur jam 11. But I heard a lot of noise at on the other end of the building. Saya mendengar banyak keributan di gedung yang lain itu. And I found out that they were telling ghost stories. Nah, ternyata mereka lagi ngerumpit bicara tentang kisah-kisah like, terang. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and it was getting noisier and noisier. Makin ribut, makin lama, makin ribut. So I told them, be quiet and go back to sleep. We, have a, full, mereka, yeah. we ten, have a full day tomorrow. Tenang dan tidurlah, kita punya jadwal padat besok. But they kept on being louder and louder. Tapi mereka makin ribut. So I jumped on a table. Lalu saya lompat naik ke atas meja. I said, stop it! Shut up! I bilang berhenti. That's the only time in my life I ever did that. <laughs> with students. <laughs> in other words, because, because of the situation, I had to talk about like But you, you wouldn't do it unless it's a very crucial situation. So you can tell that when Jesus did that, this whole story is about Jesus' authority. Okay. Kisah pertama ini dalam Markus ini juga tentang kuasa Yesus. In other words, Jesus, Mark is beginning the, his gospel story with the fact that Jesus is in control. From day one, his authority is established. Di pembukaan Markus ini dengan tegas menampilkan Yesus yang berotoritas yang pegang kendali. And in this story, it's established in two ways. Dan kisah ini dikembangkan dengan dua cara. Verse 22, the people were amazed Ayat at his teaching orang, because he taught with authority, not like their teachers of the law. Karena Yesus mengajar berbeda dengan uh, pemimpin atau orang pak pengajar yang lain. Now in those days, a teacher had to, uh, if he was a teacher from God, it was expected he could do some kind of a supernatural work to show physically that he was he had God's authority. Nah, zaman itu orang yakin kalau orang itu pengajar itu guru itu dari Allah, dia pasti bisa melakukan hal supernatural. Now, I, I, maybe I'm being presumptuous. Ini, ini hanya dugaan saya. But I think you accept my authority. Tapi menurut saya kalian saat ini sedang mengakui otoritas yang saya miliki. <laughs> But I haven't done anything miraculous. Tapi saya belum melakukan uh, mujizat apapun. I have not shown to you some kind of objective work out here that proves I have God's authority. Saya belum melakukan hal-hal yang secara objektif bisa disimpulkan kita saya punya And kuasa I think, yang I think you know why. Saya, saya pikir kalian tahu mengapa. Because since that time, karena sejak saat itu we have the Holy Spirit. Kita punya Roh Kudus. I have the Holy Spirit. Saya punya Roh Kudus. You have the Holy Spirit. Kalian punya? So when I speak by the grace of God, ketika saya berbicara di dalam anugerah Allah, I want to say, as humbly as possible, saya mau katakan, dengan rendah hati, that I believe you accept my authority. You recognize I have God's, I have God's authority to teach. So, 
And you have the Holy Spirit to recognize that. Kalian punya Roh Kudus yang membuat kalian peka akan hal ini. Now what I am saying is that this is the kind of authority every one of you must have. Ini yang saya katakan ini satu jenis kuasa yang setiap kita harus. Punya. You are not just a disciple. Kalian tidak hanya murid. You are an apostle. Kalian rasul-rasul. You represent the authority of the greatest being. Yang besar. When you go on the campus, ke kampus, if you're teaching a big group or you're talking just to one person, besar you kecil, do that by the authority given to you. Yang so the question of authority is very fundamental. And that is why I believe Mark begins with this. And so that Jesus demonstrated his authority by Casting out the demons. Yes, mendemonstrasikan kuasanya dengan mengusir. That setan. was a very clear sign he had Itu God's authority. Tanda yang authority. jelas bahwa dia punya kuasa Allah. Now, in a real sense, when we go out to teach God's word, we are challenging the devil. Of course, we are. We're challenging the devil. Kita mengajarkan Alkitab word. dalam pelayanan kita. Jelas itu adalah tindakan melawan setan. So in that setan. sense, in that sense, we are not different from Jesus. Dalam hal dalam arti seperti itulah kita tidak beda dengan Yesus. Uh, and at this point, let's turn in Mark, in chapter 3, uh, verse uh, 13, or, or, or in this case, verse 14. Now, Mark has something that Luke does not have. And that is, he gives the reasons why Jesus appointed the twelve. And there are Para three, rasul. three reasons. Ada tiga alasan. Now find those reasons. Temukan alasan itu. Only in verse. Hanya di ayat 14. In verse 14. Now, Iwan is challenging my authority. <laughs> He's very polite. Come on, come on, come on. Translate that. He said, are you sure there are three? I said, I'm positive there are three. Unless your Indonesian Bible is wrong. <laughs> okay, anybody found three? You only found two. Okay, what's the first one? To be with him. To be with him. Ha, ah, that's the first one. That's very interesting. The most important thing, brothers and sisters, God has called you to be a staff worker. Number one is not to preach. Okay. It's to be with him. Okay, what is it? Okay, what's the second reason? Uh, okay, Malia? To preach, and there's no third reason. No. Oh, I'm sorry. It's also in verse 15. You are right. You're very good observers. In verse 15 is a continuation. So you were right too. Okay. <laughs> to be with him. To preach. That is to proclaim the word of God. Thirdly, to confront. To challenge evil. That is what he told the apostles. That, that's the reason for the apostles. And the same for you and me. So, um, okay, now we, we didn't finish this. Let's finish this and then we'll have a break. <laughs> it took me 15 minutes to respond to you. <laughs> What does Jesus have to consider in choosing the twelve? They're very uh, common sense. How do you choose your leaders? How does the church, the church that you go to, how do they choose the elders? Oh, I know how some churches choose their elders. The ones that give the most money. <laughs> okay, so what does Jesus have to consider? Very practical thing. Very practical. Okay, yeah, please. Yeah, Nita? Uh, 
teaching ability. Hmm? Teaching ability. They teaching. teaching skill. Teaching skill. Um, oh, oh no no. Uh, uh, look. Uh, by, by the way, I, I, w I want to consider uh, what Chuchuk said, and that is uh, to um, convince them to believe. Now, I took a long time considering that option because at first I thought he would say uh, that uh, they must believe he's a son of God. And I find that that's how most Christians interpret uh, uh, at this issue. But they did not believe he was a son of God, really, really believe. <coughs> Saya pikir jawabannya tadi para murid harus percaya dia anak Allah. Kalau Mesias kan sih mungkin ini masuk. Until the resurrection. And even in chapter 8 of Mark when uh, when uh, Jesus takes them up and says, who do people say that I am? Finally he says, who do you say that I am? And then Peter says, you are the chosen one of God. When he said the chosen one of God, that's a Messiah. But to them in the first and second year, they believed in a political Messiah. So that even up until the night before Jesus died, they still believed that Jesus was a political Messiah, taking them down to Jerusalem with a big crowd, overturning in, 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 a, in a revolution, kick out the Romans, and re-establish Israel's political independence. That's what they thought of as an, uh, the political messiah. Bahkan di hari Yesus ditangkap, mereka masih yakin bahwa Yesus adalah Mesias secara politis. Gitu. And I think that today, that's what most people are looking for when they choose a leader. Itu pola itu tetap aja ada yang mengikuti hari ini ya, ketika I memilih mean, pemimpin. I know that Obama was here last month. Tahu Obama di sini. And I know that you have Indonesians have a special relationship with him. Tahu Indonesia punya hubungan khusus dengan Amerika. And in Hawaii we have a very special relationship to him. Obama juga Hawaii. Now I still think he's a good man. I really do. Saya masih berpikir he's not orang yang baik. He's not perfect. Dia tidak sempurna. And he has some great gifts. Dia punya banyak talenta. But he's also uh, we think that he's very like a professor. Uh, he's like a professor. Yes. He talks like a professor. He's always teaching us. He, he, he doesn't give you the impression, from my point of view, of being a great political thinker. And that is why in America, uh, only 45% of people now trust him. Sebabnya hanya 40 persen saja sekarang di Amerika yang Why? percaya kepada dia. Because we're all looking for a political messiah. Ngapa? Karena rakyat itu ingin pemimpin yang Look, punya masa I lived besar. here before when when Sukarno was still in leadership. <laughs> But you weren't even born yet. <laughs> uh, every country, that's who we're looking for. We're looking for a political messiah. Okay, now the second one, Nita. Oh, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, what did she say? The second one. Uh, teaching skill. Um, okay. And I would say this is all potential. Because remember, this is only the beginning of the second year. To have potential. To teach and preach. Okay. Uh, next group, please. Uh, okay, your group. Yeah, please. Good personality, like loyalty, faithfulness. Oh, all of those things. Can you stick to just one? Yeah. Oh, when you say to have good personality, um, 
Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, to trying to how how to deal with it. Um, you know, all of the things that you say come, I think, come under this. Menurut saya yang kamu bicarakan tadi bisa dirangkum satu kalimat ini. They all have to do. How how do I relate to others? All of the things that he said. Is that right? I'm, tr I'm trying to summarize it. Kapasitas kemampuan berrelasi dengan orang. But the, the reason I don't want to say to have good personality is because you and I have certain ideas about what that means. Kita tidak pakai istilah kepribadian yang bagus karena beda-beda istilah istilah yang sama kita bisa beda maknanya. Somebody who's very charming. Mungkin kita membayangkan orang yang he always, menari, selalu he always says the right things at the right time. Selalu ngomong yang tepat di waktu yang tepat. He knows how to make you feel good. Pintar bikin orang. Well, no, that's not nyaman. bad. It's not that there's a wrong. It's wrong. But basically, it's how do I relate to people? Ya, intinya bagi kita bisa berrelasi dengan baik dengan orang. And it may be that a person doesn't have a very bright, shining personality, but he knows or she knows how to relate to people. Okay, uh, next group, this group here, please. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> what about character? <laughs> What kind of character? That, what? Faithful? Um, okay, to be dependable, huh? Uh, um, to be faithful, okay, that's yeah. Now, I like this word, dependable. And the reason that sometimes when we use the word faithful, you know, we think of it in a super spiritual way. Oh, I really believe God. When we talk about being dependable, that's a little different. It's related to it, but it's a little bit different. Okay. Dependable juga bisa mencakup kata setia juga, tapi ada kelebihannya. Now, come on, now you finish. The sooner you finish, the sooner we'll have a break. Okay, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, this group. Look, um, um, you know, Fenty and Fona. Don't let Malia do all the talking. Come on, you talk. Committed. Committed person, totally committed. Well, I wonder if that's not the same thing as being faithful. If we are faithful, now this is all potential. Now there are some, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the last group, please. What? Able to respond. What? 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 Able to respond. Uh, easy to respond. Able to respond. To be responsible? No, respond appropriately. Um. <laughs> Okay. Well, wouldn't that be number three? Quick in response. Oh, quick in response. Um, okay. I'm a little. I'm a little reluctant to say quick to respond because sometimes. Well, well, the reason is that sometimes in personality, some people respond quickly, other people are slow. And it doesn't mean one is better than the other. Sometimes the one who responds quickly is not thinking. <laughs> so I'm, I'm reluctant to say. Uh, but well, let's say to be obedient, whether it's fast or slow, ultimately to be obedient. So. But look, what about some practical things? For instance, when you look at the list of the 12 apostles, and every one of the four gospel writers 
even Luke doesn't have it, but later on he has it in the in the book of Acts. Ya, so, kan daftar nama 12 murid itu, 12 rasul itu. So, I want to emphasize the fact that so important is the, the uh, who the apostles are that all four writers include a list. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all have a list. They all begin with Peter, they all end with Judas. Why Peter? Why is Peter always put first? And yet he was not, <laughs> I, I, I don't think he was very good in relating to people. <laughs> um, I'm not, not very sure that you know he was obedient, but he had the potential. 